I know I said you will never see me do how to draw an eye video, but I promise you, this is different. Hello everyone, and welcome to this in-depth analysis series. A series where I discuss subject in details, and in all aspects, hopefully making it a bit easier and simpler to follow. In this series, I'm hoping that I cover all the aspects of every subject and put it all in one place and in one video. These videos will be long, but I prefer to have one video for each subject than 10 videos for one. Now the method series are different, since I'm talking about each method in one video, but here it's one subject, so that's why it's gonna be in one video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the eye every aspect of the eye and every subject related to the eyes. I will leave an index in the comments section for you to navigate this long video. So let's dive in and explore the eyes in details. Let's start with the basic measurement and proportion of the eyes. We have seen in different methods that the head can be drawn in a circle with the jaw area attached to it. So to get the eyes we can divide this circle in half to get the brow line, then divide in six parts to get the one third for the hairline and one third for the nose line and the last third down will be for the chin to get the eye line we can divide the whole head in half and we will have the eye line if we divide the eye line into five parts we will get the two eyes with one eye in between and one eye on each side of the head the length of the area from the eyes to the brow line is one eye long and if we draw a triangle from the eye corner to the mouth bottom center we will have an equilateral triangle, A equal P equal C. Inside the eye itself, to get the size of the pupil, we can divide the eye area into one half and two quarters. The pupil will take one half in width and leaving one quarter on each side. As the pupil move, the same ratio will remain with the equivalent distance on each side. If we looked at the eye from the side view, we can see that the bottom eyelid is a bit back compared to the top eyelid. And when the eyes close, they don't close at the center of the eye, they close a bit below the center as we can see in this chart. The bottom lid stays in the same position in most situations. And it moves only when the eyes close to meet the top lid at the third of the way under the pupil. Remember, when you draw the eyes that they move together, as they are connected. So when you draw the eyes looking up or down, left or right, they both move the same distance. Just make sure you draw them in perspective in order for them to look right. Finally, the eyelids are like a bowling ball bag, covering the eyes from all sides except one, in that we are just seeing the eyes from the small opening between the eyelids. Now let's move to the elements of the eye, and what are the eyes consist of? First, we have the eyeballs, with the iris and the pupil and the cornea as one part. Then we have the upper lid, notice that it has a bottom plane and thickness. Then we have the lower lid, with the top plane and thickness as well. Then finally, we have the eyelashes and the eyebrows on top. On this diagram, we can see the parts together in the front view, along with the tear duct in the corner. Notice the eyelid shape as the face rotates. The angle and the shape rotate in perspective as the face rotates. The shape of the eyelids are not perfect ellipses. They have a slight tilt in a diagonal way. That's because the iris has an effect on the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. Where the iris is, there will be a higher step on the upper eyelid. As for the eyebrows, the hair grows in a certain way. Starting from the left, it grows up and to the left. Then it starts moving toward the corner of the eyebrows, then finally down at the tail of it. There are so many different types of eyebrows of course, depending on the gender and the age. So we have bushy and thick in the males, and thin and light in the females. Also the tail change depending on the ethnicity as well. Now let's draw the element one by one and see how the eye will look like step by step. This is one of many illustrations of the eyes yet to come. Okay, I start with the upper lid, and then the lower lid, making sure I have the axis of the eye in mind. Then I draw the iris and the pupil in the middle, 50% of the space of the eye. Next, the upper lid folds. 
then the eyebrow and we have the eye ready then we add the values remember that the pupil is a hole so it's pure black then we have the iris with different values darker on top do the cast shadow of the upper lid and lighter on the opposite side of the highlight since the light hit the cornea and reflect on the other side Then we add the values to the lower lid, the upper lid, and the eyebrow. Remember how hair grows on the eyebrow, first on the top left direction, then toward the other end. Then I add the eyelashes, growing from the inside lid, then the out. Of course, they are not straight across. They are curving from the inside to the outside. And finally adding more values to the surrounding area and we are done and here are the steps side by side next let's talk about the anatomy of the eyes but before I start let's take a look at the actual placement of the eyeball and the skull as you can see here the eyeball fits in the eye socket with an extra space for the surrounding muscles that control the rotation of the eyeball. We can see how far it protrudes from the side view. On the other side, we can see the muscles that place the eyeball tightly inside the eye socket and how it looks a bit slanted from the side. Next, we are going to talk about the muscles surrounding the eyes. As you can see in this clip, the surrounding muscle is the orbital muscle around the eyes you can see that it's covering the eye from all sides it controls the movement of the eyelids then we have the depressors on the corners or the corrugators that push the eyebrows to the corner then we have the procerus pushing the area in between the eyes up and down and finally we have the frontalis that raises the eyebrows and wrinkles the forehead so those are the four muscles that control the eyes from the outside and then we have another four or more muscles controlling the rotation of the eyeballs from the inside but you can still see a bit of them at the corner of the eyes especially when you are looking to the other side we can see it even clearer here on this model with different colors the orbital muscles the depressors the procerus and the frontalis we can see the angle of the eye from this side view Here we can see the placement of the eyeball in the bone socket, the muscles, and finally the skin layer compared together with its placement in the skull. If we look at the eye from the side view inside the socket, 
Here what it will look like with these inner muscles controlling the rotation of the eyeball. And the second illustration we can see the eyelids and the outer muscles behind them. And we can see how the movement of the eyelids is done. The illustration explains the inner section view of the eye. Notice that the eyelids are not on top of the eyeball directly. Now let's see the effect of these muscles on the movement of the eye. Starting with the orbital muscles and its eyelid part. The eyelid part of the muscles closes the eye gently, while the orbital part closes the eyelid forcefully. The depressor or the corrugator pushes the eyebrows toward the corners, while the procerus pulls the middle down or push it up. Finally, the frontalis either raises up one eyebrow from one side, or both of them together, or pushes the inner corners up in case of uh, the sad emotion or the angry emotion. Next, let's take a look at the eyes in different views, the front, the three quarters, and the side view. Before we do that, let's take a look at the model to see the eyes before we draw them. This is the Anatomy 360 program I talked about back in the shoulder anatomy, I think. It's amazing how helpful it is to use as a reference. So here we can look at the eyes from the front, the three quarters, and the side view. Now let's draw them. I'm gonna draw the eyes in three different views while changing the position of the iris as it points to different sides. First, the front view. Looking straight ahead is very straightforward process. Next front view with the eyes closed. Notice how they close a bit under the pupil, not all the way down. After that, the same eyes looking to the left. The eyelids change to accommodate the push of the eyeball toward the corner of the eyes. Now looking to the right, again the eyelids pushed up following the iris. Next, looking up, here you can see the changing in the eyelid the most, pushing the upper eyelid open from the center as it's looking up and hiding a bit more of the iris. Finally, looking down, the upper lid follows the iris, almost closing the eye, but not all the way down. The eyelashes here hide most of the eyes as they move down with the eyelid.
Next, let's see the same movement but from the side view. Notice how the bottom lid is not directly under the upper lid. It's a bit to the back in a slight angle. Finally, let's look at the same movement in a three-quarter view. Making sure the further away eye looks smaller due to the perspective. This is the most challenging view of all of them. But once you manage the correct perspective, you can do the rest in the same way. Now practice this movement as well, to get the idea of how the eyes move while keeping the head in the same straight forward position. Now later on, we're gonna move the head in extreme angles and see how that affects the way we draw the eyes.
Now let's take a look at the planes of the eye. This will become important when you start to paint the eyes. Before we do, let's take a look at the model first. Here we can see the upper lid as a convex shape and the corner of the eye as a concave shape. We can follow the topography of the eye to see how it goes in and out depending on the part you are drawing. We can see it even more on the three quarter view and see how the upper lid pushing out. Here we can see the clear topography of the eye area and how it's going in and out from the top eyelid to the bottom. Changing forms in and out will change the way the light hit the eyes. If you are using a top light source for example, the light will hit the upper lid and shadow will be created underneath it, especially in the corners of the eye. Also the upper eyelid will cast shadow on the top of the eyeballs, while the lower eyelid plane will get the highlight due to the direct hit of light on top of it. Now here is a simplified shape of the upper eyelid and how it's rotating to create a convex and concave shape. In these three illustrations, we can see the topography of the eye in all views, highlighting each part in different colors, and showing the normal lines on it. And here where it all comes together, and see how the light hit the faces of the eyes in different intensity and mix between highlight and shadows. First the shadow of the eye ridge casting down, then the highlight of the upper eyelid, then the cast shadow of the upper eyelid on the eye below it, then the highlight on the lower lid, then the shadow beneath the lower lid, and finally the highlight on the cheek area. Now let's talk about the different way to simplify drawing the eyes. But before that, let's make sure we understand the shape of the eyes. From this view, you can see that the eye goes back toward the side view. It's not all in the front view, so the corner of it will move toward the back. That's why from the front view, the inner corner of the eye is lower than the outer corner of the eyes, creating the shape of the eyelids. After that, we have the upper eyelid fold, and then the eyebrows also going toward the back. Finally, we have the lower eyelid fold and the eyelashes, and that's all what we have to draw. So let's start drawing the eyes. The first method, we can draw an ellipse, then cut down the corners from both sides to follow the axis of the eyes. Then we draw the tear duct area and we will have the basic shape of the eye. Next we draw the lower plane of the upper eyelid and the top plane of the bottom eyelid. Then we draw the iris and the pupil. Notice that the iris is hidden from the top. That's why the pupil is drawn a bit higher than the visible center of the iris. Then we draw the eyelashes from the inside out as we said, and then the lower lid eyelashes. The fold of the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid, adding the shadows and highlights. And finally, the eyebrows following the hair direction. And here is the method step by step and side by side. Now another method to draw the eyes is to draw the eyeball first with the iris, then draw the eyelids covering a bit from the iris from the top 
and at the edge of the iris from the bottom. Then we add the fold of the upper eyelid, then the planes of the eyelids. After that we add the eyelashes Then we add the values of the eyes, the pupil and the iris And finally draw the eyebrow So we can start the eyes from different ways as you saw and we will end up with the same result. And here is the method step by step side by side. Next, let's try to paint the eyes from the beginning to the end. Starting the same way we did before, following any method you like. I like to start with the eyelids and their top and bottom planes, then the iris and the upper eyelid fold, and finally the eyebrow. Adding values to the eyes, we follow the planes of the eyes. Each part from the top casts a shadow on the part below it, and the part below catches the highlight on its top plane. Remember, every eye is different. Some eyes are more protruding than the others, and some are sinking in more than the rest. So after painting the values, I add color layer and add the basic color of the skin and the iris. Then we add an overlay and a multiply layers to add the makeup color, highlight and shadows. Of course we can give it more time to make it perfect but this is just a simple way to paint the eyes in a fast way. And we are done. Now let's take a look at the eyes in extreme angles. First, let's look at the model and see how the eyes look in different angles. As you can see, when the head is raised up, the cheekbones start to get more and more visible. Also, the lower lids start covering parts of the eyes. And you can see the upper lid fatty part showing more. When we lower the head down, the ridge of the eyes is more visible, the skull itself covering most of the eyes. Now these models do not have eyelashes due to the 3D scanning cameras, but in case of the eyelashes were there, 
it will be hiding most of the eyes when the head is lowered down. From the top right angle, we can see the nose covering the other eye while the lower lid is visible on the other eyes. And we can clearly see the bottom lid plane of the upper eyelid. From the bottom left angle, the far away eye will be covered by the eye ridge and eyelashes. While the other eye, we can see the top plane of the bottom lid clearly if it's not covered by eyelashes. Now when we turn the head more than the side view, the eyes start to disappear bit by bit. Here we can see the planes of the eye and the visibility of the cheekbone starting to come out. The more we turn the head, the less visible the eyes will be, except part of the upper eyelid, fat areas and the lower eyelid along with the cheekbones. Now a bit more turning and we can see only parts of the lower eyelid and the shape of the skull. Finally, as the head turns to extreme angles, we can only see the upper ridge of the eye and the cheekbones. From the bottom right angle, we can see the lower eyelid and the bottom plane of the top eyelid, along with the cheekbone covering most of the eye. From the top left angle, we can see only the eye ridge and the tiny part of the lower eyelid. Okay, these are the two bones that will play a huge part in seeing the eye in extreme angle. The malar bone or the cheek bone and the frontal bone or the eye ridge. So in extreme rear view, those are the bones we're gonna see. And as the head turns, the eyelashes of the upper eyelid will come into view first and some of the tail of the eyebrows. As we turn the head toward us, a bit of the eyelid will start to show. Then more and more of the eyebrows and the lower eyelid will come to show as well, till we finally see the eye in the side view. In this diagram, we can see the eyes from the front angle all the way up and all the way down, and how each angle show parts of the eye less or more. The more it turns up, the more the lower lid will show, and the less of the upper eye will, will be visible. Also, the more of the bottom of the eyelid will show. As we look down, we will see less of the lower eyelid and more of the upper eyelid, while the eyelashes will cover most of the eyeballs and its components. Finally, in these illustrations, we see the head in up and down position and to the left and right in higher or lower angles. Each angle showing different parts of the eye, either covered or shown more depending on the view angle. Next, let's see how light affects the look of the eyes depending on its direction. But first, let's look at the model in different lighting situation. As you can see here, the direction of the light will affect the light and shadow casting of the part of the eye. For example, a top left light will cast shadow underneath the upper eyelid on the left, and it will cast shadow on most of the eyelid on the right due to the eye ridge and the nose covering most of the light direction. But we will see the light hit the lower lid on the right side and the upper lid and the lower lid on the left side. If the light hit from the top, we will see the lower lid catch most of the highlights and part of the upper lid. But if the light hits from the middle top, so in front of the face, we will see that only the corners of the eye will catch the shadow. Finally, a light from the bottom will highlight all the opposite side of the face adding the cast shadow for the lower eyelid on the eyes instead of the upper eyelid and the nose will be casting shadow upward in between the eyes the more you change the light position the more different the eye lighting will be now here you can see the top left light affecting the face showing the right side mostly in shadows except the lower eyelid while the left side is mostly in light except the corners and underneath the upper eyelid while in the case of bottom light it shows the highlight on the lower lids and casts shadow inside the eye from the bottom and the shadow of the eyelashes on the top eyelid. Finally, the lighting from the top will be the opposite to the bottom lighting, showing the shadows on the corner of the eyes and under the upper eyelid while the lower eyelid catches the highlight and some cast shadow underneath it. Next, let's talk about the difference between the male and female eyes. Let's look at the models side by side. We can see the difference in many parts here. 
the eyebrows in the female is thin and more angular and the eyebrows in the male is thick and more straight also the eyelashes will be thicker in the female than in the male and the shape of the eye is more round in the female and more triangular and long in the male now here we can see all the differences in the female we can see the eyebrows having higher end tip more space between the eyebrows and thinner hair on them also rounder and shorter eyes rounder lines on the corner and longer and thicker eyelashes while in the male we have flatter thicker and closer eyebrows more wide and narrow eye shape more angular line in the corners and shorter and thinner eyelashes next let's talk about the ethnicity and the difference of the eyes around the world let's look at the models first this is the caucasian male you can see the narrow eyes not so thick eyebrows and triangular eye shape the caucasian female you can also see the thin eyebrows and round eyes the african male we can see the wavy eye shape and eyebrow and a thick lower eyelid same for the african female except less thick lower eyelid the asian male we have the double fold upper eyelid in some people and there will be no fold in the others also more slanted corner of the eyes and there will be more space between the two eyes sometimes more than one eye in between the middle eastern female or the persian female we have a thicker eyebrows and a higher angle of the outer corner of the eyes than the inner corner the middle eastern male or the persian male we have a thick eyebrows some kind of a bird wing like and more triangular shape of the eyes so now let's see the full description the caucasian male eyes narrow eyes thin eyebrows short and thin eyelashes top eyelid tangent to the eye at the pupil edge and finally straight eyebrow end the caucasian female eyes narrow but round eyes very thin eyebrows medium length eyelashes elongated round eyes a straight eyebrow end the african male eyes wavy eyes arched eyebrows end short and thin eyelashes deep crease at the corner and thicker lower eyelid the african female eyes round wavy eyes thin eyebrows longer eyelashes arched eyebrows ends deep crease at the corner the arabian male eyes narrow angular eyes thick bird wing eyebrows short thick eyelashes top eyelid tangent to the eye at the pupil edge high eyebrow end the arabian female eyes triangular eyes curved eyebrows end very thick long eyelashes the start of the eye is much lower than the end corner high eyebrow end the asian male eyes narrow eyes straight eyebrows end short eyelashes no fold in the upper eyelid with longer end corners eyelashes move down and then to the corner the asian female eyes narrow and spaced eyes very thin eyebrows short eyelashes no fold in the upper eyelid with longer end corners and next let's compare the young eyes to the old eyes let's again look at the models here we can see the young have rounder eyes no wrinkles sharp features and big iris compared to the shape of the eye as for the old especially older than 60 years we will have a lot of wrinkles and narrow eyes and lower eyelids as for the less old maybe 50 to 60 years old female we will have less wrinkles and some will show on the corners and we will have narrow eyes and lower eyelid so to see the full range in babies age 1 to 3 years old we will have almost completely round eyes the shape of the eye is small due to the baby fat but the iris will be always the same size from 
the baby age to old age. The size of the iris will not change. So it will look much bigger in babies than older people. You will also see very thin eyebrows and longer eyelashes. As we grow, the roundness of the eyes will get less and less as we grow out of the baby fat and the eyebrows will get thicker by age. Also, the outer corner of the eyes will start to raise up and the eyelashes will grow thicker and longer. Finally, in old age, wrinkles will be everywhere, especially at the lower eyelid and the eye corner, and the eyelashes will get shorter and thinner along with the eyebrows. Next, let's see the different drawing style of the eyes. The eyes can be drawn in so many different styles, the western comics, the eastern anime, the Disney style cartoons or even normal cartoons. There is so many ways to draw the eyes. If you want to see me draw these eyes, the video already exists in the comparison video I did back in the top 10 method to draw the head series. I will leave a link down in the description box. Also you can know more about these 3 methods of drawing in that series. I will leave a link to all 4 videos in the description box. Next, let's study the effect of emotion on the eyes. As we know, the eyes don't stay still when we change the emotion. They move and change along with the face muscles depending on that emotion. So let's see this emotion in action and see how they affect the eyes with them. In this example of a smile, we see the cheek muscles push up toward the orbital muscle which will close the eyelid a little bit, making the eyes look narrow than usual. So in the smile situation, we have the eyelid closing a little bit. In the surprise emotion, we can see the frontalis muscles raising up and raising the orbital muscle with them, opening the upper eyelid. So as you can see here in the case of happiness, the eyelids closes a little bit due to the push of the orbital muscles. In the angry emotion, we have the orbital muscle pushing up and the depressors pushing the eye along with the procerus toward the center, making all these wrinkles in between. In case of being surprised, as we saw, the frontalis raises the eyelid up, uncovering the iris and showing it in the middle of the eyes. In the sad emotion, we have the depressors and the procerus pushing the eyes toward the center and up, arcing the eyebrows down, and closing a bit of the eyelids. In the disgust emotion, we have the depressor and the procerus pushing the nose and the eye toward the center of the nose ridge. And finally, in the confused emotion, we have one side of the frontalis muscles pulling one eye up, raising up the eyebrows from one side, while the rest of the muscles push the eyes toward the center in between them. In the final chapter, I will cover some beginner mistake while drawing the eyes and a quick fix to each problem. First, we have the problem of outlining and the lack of details. We can simply fix this up by learning more about the eye shape and how the eye parts look together. So we learned that the eyelashes never go straight up, they go from under the eyelids and out. Simple details will change the way the eye look completely. Also, the eyebrows should be a bit bigger. And as you can see, the eyes look more realistic now. The second problem, the distance between the eyes, isn't one eye. This can easily be fixed by drawing an eye in between the two eyes, and thus calculating the right space in between. In case of the three quarters view, we have to make sure that they are equal in distance but in perspective, which will look a bit foreshortened.
Next we have the placement error. This is the most common mistake in the beginner art. Putting the eyes either high in the head or low. To fix this problem we can draw the head as a whole and measure half of the distance and put the eyes right in the center, thus preventing the wrong placement. In this next example, we have the eyes a bit high and too close together. We can fix this the same way, by drawing the head and measuring the correct proportion in between. The next one, we have different sizes of the eyes, confusing between the three quarters and the front view. We can fix it up by drawing the head correctly and placing each part in its right place. Following up on the 10 method I talked about on the first tutorial series on how to draw the head. Next we have the low details in the face again. Adding few more details and knowing more about the eyes will fix this issue right away. Finally we have wrong placement, different size and no details all in one. We can fix it by drawing the head correctly and placing each element in its place. Even in the three quarters view, if you draw the head right, you won't have any problem with the placement of the facial feature. And by that, we are done with this huge tutorial, which I didn't expect to be that long to be honest, it's almost an hour. But this is what I always wanted to see when I used to look for the how to draw the eye tutorial on YouTube. I never learned from the quick 5 minute tutorials. Maybe it's just me, but I like to know the reason why behind each part, and I hope that's what I did here. Well, this is it for this tutorial. I'm sure there will be more parts for each facial feature, but uh, these tutorials take a long time to make. This one took over two months to finish, but I hope it was worth it, and that it covered all the information you are looking for when it comes to the eyes. I think I'm gonna need a little break after this one, or maybe I will go right back working on the next tutorial, I don't know. I don't know just yet. I'm just tired now, so we will see after a good night's sleep. If you made it this far, you deserve a break yourself. As for me, it's time to go. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.